Welcome to Conversations About Care with Texas Oncology, a video series highlighting prominent topics on cancer care within the Central Texas community. In this episode, we'll talk about the importance of screenings and why they're one of the most valuable tools when it comes to detecting cancer. I'm excited to be joined today by a group of multidisciplinary Texas oncology professionals from right here in Austin to share their perspectives on cancer prevention and early detection. I'm Gail Patel. I'm a certified genetic counselor. I'm Amy Mackey. I am a breast surgical oncologist. Uh, Rob Fuller. I'm a surgical oncologist. Uh, Dr. Kyle Keyes, a urologist. All right. Well, thank you all for being here to join us for this important discussion. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's talk about why it's more urgent and important today for the community to receive those regular screenings than it ever really has before. I know the pandemic caused a lot of people to put those screenings off. Why is it so important now more than ever? Well, I, I think that uh, we all found that people stopped going to their doctor because of COVID and because of just concerns about being around others. And so the natural um, way that we were screening people was seeing their doctor and getting screened and that fell away. Uh, mammography, colonoscopy, all those tests went way down, which took away a lot of the early detection, our means of, of having early detection and so finding cancers early. So now that the world has opened back up, uh, it's certainly no time like the presence to get screened and get looked at and, and if you find something, get it taken care of. Well, let's talk about the benefits of early detection, especially for the most common types of cancer. What are, what are the benefits and how does that give you a, you know, a head start or give you an advantage over those who put it off and wait? The earlier you can catch a cancer, the less treatment you typically need. Almost universally, the smaller it is, the easier it is to take care of. You had less surgery, less radiation, less hormone therapy for prostate cancer, less chemotherapy, and that's relatively true for all cancers. How can people determine their own risk? Sitting down and saying, you know, this is my personal history, this is my family history is one of the easiest ways to start that conversation. Most people have a family history of somebody with cancer. So by sitting down and talking to your doctor, say my mom has a history of breast cancer, that can help me learn when I need to start having my mammogram. Do I start at age 40 like most women or should I start a little bit earlier based on my family history? Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think taking ownership of some of your own history and figuring out what things actually do lead to potentially increased risk or decreased risk. Um, for breast specifically, we know that there are certain lifestyle modifications that we can make that actually decrease your risk of breast cancer. We know family history plays an important role in that. So eating healthy, exercising, all of those things go into our risk calculations for breast cancer. How do I know if I need to be tested? How do you know if that's something for you? Cancer itself is a genetic disease, so all cancer starts because a cell has acquired a mutation and changed and grows out of control and turns into that cancer that we, we know as today. There are a small subset of people that can actually be born with a change in a gene that makes that gene not work correctly. So these are genes we all have. They're not just in women, they're in, uh, in the men too. And these genes are what we call kind of tumor suppressor genes. So they're supposed to go out in our body, find cancer cells and get rid of them. If you're born with a mutation in one of those genes, that puts you at a much higher lifetime risk for developing cancer than everybody else. So in our clinics, we really wanna know what people out there have a much higher risk for cancer so that we can do these things much earlier. So we can intervene sooner if we can do better screening, more frequent screening. Sometimes we can even prevent cancers. My mom is a BRCA1 carrier, and so I know firsthand kind of how that plays out in a family. By knowing that information, myself, my sister, my cousins, we've all sort of been armed with power to go out to our physicians and say, what can we do to decrease the risk of breast cancer? You can lower your risk by about 90% yeah. of a breast cancer. So if you come in and you have an 80% of breast cancer and now you've done a risk-reducing mastectomy, you've dropped that risk below 10%. That's significant. Um, and so those are the conversations that need to be had, and that's what genetic testing has sort of given us the power to do. Well, what is, what's the one thing that you wish people knew about the importance of detection? Early stage cancer is treatable, uh, curable, right? Um, but advanced stage cancer, those, um, those opportunities are lost. Probably the hardest question that I get in my clinic is when, after I diagnose someone with new cancer, is they just come back to me and say, well, what caused this? And what could I have done to prevent it? We can use those examples to people who have, we haven't found the cancer yet, to say, please learn lessons from previous generations. 
And I think that's what genetic testing is hoping to do, is to find more individuals who have that risk. And while we can't prevent all cancers, we do have some preventative strategies. And if we know you're one of those people at the highest risk, give us that opportunity to personalize your care and, and take better care of you. Well, thank you all so much for joining us for this very important discussion and for sharing your perspectives on the importance of early detection in the fight against cancer. For more information about screenings, visit us online at texasoncology.com.